The police operation in Mariupol began mid-morning in a clear attempt by the authorities to finish what they started two days ago. Video showed local residents trying to block the path of the military vehicles. People here have scant loyalty to the authorities in Kiev. On Friday, the authorities went for the police headquarters. After two hours of fighting, the gun battle subsided, but the building itself remained on fire. Early reports spoke of several people dead and many more injured. The operation was launched on the day commemorating Russia's victory over the Nazis in World War II. It was always going to provide a platform for a massive outpouring of pro-Russian sentiment. In Donetsk, several thousand people marched to Lenin Square, shouting slogans of solidarity with Moscow and being whipped up by the rhetoric from the stage. They're saying from the stage, fascists kill people here in Donetsk during World War II. Now fascists are killing people in Odessa. It's a message which is being warmly received by the people behind me. In the town of Slavyansk, where pro-Russian militia are firmly in control, the march was smaller but perhaps even more defiant. Speeches drawing parallels between the Nazis and the current government in Kiev. Today, fascism raises its wild face again, personified by the Kiev junta that took power with armed force. We will never recognize those authorities. In Kiev, there was tight security as the acting prime minister and other members of the interim government attended their Victory Day commemorations. We are doing everything we can in order to de-escalate de the situation and to fix this problem with all means. Those who are terrorists, those who possess arms, we will bring them to justice. But we started and launched a nationwide dialogue a few weeks ago, and we believe that the country will be united. But Ukraine doesn't look very united at the moment. Paul Brennan, Al Jazeera, Donetsk.